It was not good. It was, oh no. Commissioner Debbie O'Malley remembers getting the news. Bernalillo County has a serious cash flow problem. And we have to be able to pay our bills and we have to meet our obligations when it comes to projects. But from parks to parking lots, the county has had to put off routine fixes or stop projects cold because of a cash crunch. It's not that the taxpayers who are funding the projects aren't paying up, it's that the money for the work is tied up in long-term investments made by County Treasurer Manny Ortiz and his Chief Investment Officer Patrick Padilla. To get at the cash, the pair sold county investments at a huge loss. That's real cash. We've lost that, $800,000. That's a lot of money. Uh, and then there's the potential to lose more, you know, uh, in the millions. O'Malley, a Democrat, is calling for a vote of no confidence, and she has support even across the aisle in Republican Commissioner Wayne Johnson. So this is a bad decision? Yeah, I think so. And, and it's not a new one. The investment strategy dates back to when Patrick Padilla was treasurer for the eight years before Ortiz took office. Padilla's chief investment officer for most of that time, Manny Ortiz. If you're looking for a change in administration, we didn't have one. Um, we have term limits in the office for a reason. While the county's money woes are just spilling into public view, Johnson says financial pros hired by the county warned Ortiz and Padilla more than a year ago in a report uncovered by KRQE News. It really said the exact same thing that the RBC report said last month and the Slocum report said last month. The 2012 report said that the treasurer's strategy could pay off, but only if interest rates stayed at historic lows. Such strategies, quote, often look attractive, the report said, but with this comes risk. Johnson says the warning couldn't have been more clear. This wasn't an advisable policy in the first place. It looked good on the surface. But with the threat to public projects and the county budget mounting, Padilla and then Ortiz continued the risky strategy, pouring hundreds of millions of your property tax dollars into long-term investments. As predicted, interest rates are creeping up, exposing holes in the treasurer's strategy. Now the state securities division has begun an inquiry. Ortiz and Padilla avoided us today, just like they've avoided county commission meetings this month. Ortiz sent commissioners a letter instead saying his plan earned the county more than $3 million and telling them to butt out, saying, quote, any unilateral action you take will simply lack force or effect. O'Malley says the county commission needs to do something. Enough is enough. This is our position on this issue. The no confidence vote could be set for next week. With producer Jeff Proctor on special assignment, Matt Grubbs, KRQE News 13. It was not good. It was, oh no. Commissioner Debbie O'Malley remembers getting the news. Bernalillo County has a serious cash flow problem. And we have to be able to pay our bills and we have to meet our obligations when it comes to projects. But from parks to parking lots, the county has had to put off routine fixes or stop projects cold because of a cash crunch. It's not that the taxpayers who are funding the projects aren't paying up, it's that the money for the work is tied up in long-term investments made by County Treasurer Manny Ortiz and his Chief Investment Officer Patrick Padilla. To get at the cash, the pair sold county investments at a huge loss. That's real cash. We've lost that, $800,000. That's a lot of money. Uh, and then there's the potential to lose more, you know, uh, in the millions. O'Malley, a Democrat, is calling for a vote of no confidence, and she has support even across the aisle in Republican Commissioner Wayne Johnson. So this is a bad decision? Yeah, I think so. And, and it's not a new one. The investment strategy dates back to when Patrick Padilla was treasurer for the eight years before Ortiz took office. Padilla's chief investment officer for most of that time, Manny Ortiz. If you're looking for a change in administration, we didn't have one. Um, we have term limits in the office for a reason. While the county's money woes are just spilling into public view, okay. Johnson says financial pros hired by the county warned Ortiz and Padilla more than a year ago in a report uncovered by KRQE News. It really said the exact same thing that the RBC report said last month and the Slocum report said last month. The 2012 report said that the treasurer's strategy could pay off, but only if interest rates stayed at historic lows. Such strategies, quote, often look attractive, the report said, but with this comes risk. Johnson says the warning couldn't have been more clear. This wasn't an advisable policy in the first place. It looked good on the surface. But with the threat to public projects and the county budget mounting, Padilla and then Ortiz continued the risky strategy pouring hundreds of millions of your property tax dollars into long-term investments. 
As predicted, interest rates are creeping up, exposing holes in the treasurer's strategy. Now the state securities division has begun an inquiry. Ortiz and Padilla avoided us today, just like they've avoided county commission meetings this month. Ortiz sent commissioners a letter instead saying his plan earned the county more than $3 million and telling them to butt out, saying, quote, any unilateral action you take will simply lack force or effect. O'Malley says the county commission needs to do something. Enough is enough. This is our position on this issue. The no confidence vote could be set for next week. With producer Jeff Proctor on special assignment, Matt Grubbs, KRQE News 13. At the center of the investigation into the Bernalillo County Treasurer's Office is one question. Who was making money? Well, I guess unless you know the bond market, I think you're asking the wrong question. None of the brokers charge a fee. They're doing it we for free? Buy, did I say they were doing it for free? You did. I said they don't charge a fee. As former treasurer and current county investment chief Patrick Padilla shows, getting a straight answer from the treasurer's office is tricky business. You gotta, guys got to do your homework. I can't do it for you. And Padilla has been the only one talking. Is the treasurer around? Trying to pin down treasurer Manny Ortiz no, I don't want to to has been fruitless. Using excuses from sickness to stress to Halloween costumes, Ortiz ducked three interviews he scheduled with us in the last week. But maybe Ortiz isn't the one with answers. After all, by his own admission, Patrick Padilla has been orchestrating trades for the county since 2005. And that means he knows who made money on the hundreds of millions of dollars in trades. And while he says he'll tell you... What you guys need to do instead of make accusations, you need to come down here, you need to look at the bid sheets. He won't. We can come down here and look at those bids for these sales? I have no idea. I'm not the county treasurer. Those trades, the money they generated, and the relationships between Ortiz, Padilla, and their brokers are now at the center of a law enforcement investigation. Agents at the State Securities Division have subpoenaed nine county brokers. One of them, Royce O. Simpson of Oppenheimer's Houston office, has a history with Padilla, who has made sure hundreds of millions of dollars of county business followed him from brokerage to brokerage. Why? Did the county move money away from UBS and into Oppenheimer when Royce Simpson left UBS and into Oppenheimer? We didn't move money. You did? No. You moved $75 million from UBS um, within about two, three months of Royce Simpson leaving that job and going to join Oppenheimer. Now, $75 million. Dollars. Patrick Padilla's own records show that's not true. In March of 2011, Simpson had traded $70 million of county business. We traced that money as it became $45 million, and then 38, then 10. As that was happening, Roy Simpson was switching jobs from UBS to Oppenheimer. That firm made its first county trade the month after he started. Just seven months later, Oppenheimer had $62 million worth of transactions on the county's investment sheet. Simpson's old firm had not a penny. Patrick Padilla's description of Simpson is not as complex as their relationship. And what can you tell me about him? He's a broker? He's a broker with a history of angry government clients, but Patrick Padilla kept pushing business his way. In the early 1990s, a California city sued Simpson and his employer for their handling of trades. The case settled for more than a million dollars and Simpson had to kick in 50 grand. By the late 90s, Simpson was trading for Sandoval County through an account opened by Cheryl Tucker. Cheryl Tucker is Patrick Padilla's wife and Manny Ortiz's campaign treasurer. That's her holding the camera she used to shoot our interview with her husband. Sandoval County was not as pleased with Simpson as Padilla and Tucker seem to have been. It sued him for excessive trading of long-term securities. A judge dismissed the suit, saying in part, Tucker knew about Simpson's strategy. In 2011, another settlement, this time between Simpson's new firm, UBS, and Harris County, Texas, which accused him of overcharging for trades. The settlement, more than $650,000. Despite years of investing with him, Patrick Padilla says Simpson's past is news to him. You're the first one that's ever told me that. I didn't know that he had a problem. Patrick Padilla and Manny Ortiz will eventually have to reveal who made money on county trades and how they made it. The public and securities prosecutors are anxious to know if anyone broke the law. On special assignment, Matt Grubbs, KRQE News 13.